what are the conversations like? So, so the one that I'm curious about is this one, exact optional property types. So to me, this is a very important type and it's been in pretty much every code base I've, I've worked in professionally since it's been released, but it's not in the strict compiler family. Uh, it's, it's kind of on its own like that. I'm just curious, like, uh, we don't have to get into the specifics of this one necessarily, but just like broadly speaking from a design philosophy, what is the process that you guys go through to decide whether or not something goes in strict mode or whether it's just part of the language full stop? What are those conversations like? It's largely driven by um, either real world, real world code, like literally, like we have a test suite where we run like the top 100 um, TypeScript repos mm -hmm. on GitHub and, and see like what happens. Um, we also run these flags against like some internal code bases that we have access to. Um, mm -hmm. and also just like examples that you can just kind of like dream up with your head around like, what would this look like in practice? Um, yep. and from there we look at those results and we say like, okay, if you, if we just turn this flag loose on everyone, um, how would that go? Um, and what we want is for the answer to be like, you would feel good about, <laughs> encountering these sorts of bugs uh, or type errors in your code base. Um, because that's a, that's what's going to happen, right? Like people are going to upgrade and they're going to, if they have strict true and we put this in the strict family, then everyone is going to see this like the day the release goes out, right? Or the day they upgrade, which you know, maybe that's years yeah. later. But um, mm -hmm. for, for this one, it's like, well, this was a tough one because I think if you it really depends on how you write your code, right? If you write your code such that like, yeah. you know, property presence is exactly the same or property presence has like semantics in my code base. Yep. There are people who write code like that. Absolutely. Um, there are people who absolutely don't write code that way. And, and um, we'll do like, you know, map operations that will end up putting an undefined in there and, and all this other stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, a it's a funny middle ground with this one, because there are certain situations in JavaScript where it, like you can genuinely not even tell the difference whether or not it's there and undefined or just not there. Yeah. And then there are other situations like object.keys where it's mm -hmm. quite a strong, <laughs> clear difference between the two cases. <laughs> yeah. So it's hard to know from a perspective of writing the language, which one is something people will hit the most. Yeah. Well, it's this, like, do I call is... object.keys in my code base or don't I is effectively what this code, what this flag is about. It, yeah. it always comes down to like bang for the buck, right? You know, like mm -hmm. something can be incredibly useful, but it can also be like very breaky, right? Um, mm -hmm. In the case of exact optional property types, it's funny because it really reminds me of the strict any example, right? The reason that we didn't do that, so like we talk about strict any, the reason why we didn't do that is because at the end of the day, the idea of saying like, oh, any should act as like that dynamic type that I mentioned earlier, right? It should not leak. It should allow you to do whatever you want with it, but it can't just spread around in that way. And the problem is that people really do use any as like a, damn it, I really know what I'm doing thing and don't get in my way and allow other indirect assignability to just work, right? Mm -hmm. And so so that 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 just doesn't work with the way that people have been using the type system for the last like, eight, nine years, 10 years. It's more, I guess it's more than 10 years now. Yeah. Same here, right? Like we added, um, we added undefined as its own type back in TypeScript 2.0. And for years, even the team was always convinced that like, it doesn't really matter whether or not you say explicitly undefined or you mark something as optional, right? And so years later, if you want to say, actually, you always should have been saying or undefined if you really meant that you could permit assigning undefined, yep. which is kind of like, Hey, you know, didn't you know this thing I was going to decide eight years later should have been the thing that you prepared for? That's like <laughs> totally. a little bit yeah. unfair. Yeah, um, I feel bad to say. It turns out you've been writing your code wrong this entire time. Yeah. Well, some, so, I don't remember who it was, but someone on GitHub around the PR for this one wrote something to the effect of, if we could go back in time, we would have made this the behavior from the default. Probably, yeah. Like from the start. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was my, maybe Anders. Uh, well, it was his, his PR anyway, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for most of these strictness flags, honestly, like, I, I think it is broadly true that for like most things that we add like this, accepting no index, no unchecked index access, I think we would turn these rules on by default. Because like, this one was a it, exact optional property types was tough because we had to go update definitely typed. Um, yeah, uh, a lot, <laughs> you know, uh, anytime where it's like, well, if we might need to do a bulk update on 9000 packages. It's like, oops. Um, 
Okay. And even then you didn't really know if like you really got them all is the problem, right? It's yeah. all, it's all based on whatever the tests had mm-hmm. and that's all, that's the best we could do there. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, the good news is for anybody curious about this one, whether you should use it or not, at least I'll say, I think if you're a library author, you should 100% of the time use it because mm-hmm. it means that people who are in your code base, um, like it means that if you, if they have some like, uh, like they want to pass an object. Let's say you have a function that takes an object that takes some thing. If you don't have this on, but your your consumers do, what they have to actually write looks like looks like this. Yeah, it's gross. It's and really gross. Yeah. Like just by turning this option on and putting or uh, or is it here? Putting or undefined, it allows you to kind of let them do it the more natural way, the way you pr- mm-hmm. probably already do it in your code base. So, yeah. You know, the other thing with this flag that's interesting to think about is like, um, sometimes we look at type system features and we're like, um, you know, w- one of the jobs that the community broadly has is writing DTS files for libraries that are out there. Um, and if libraries don't document their behavior around some particular aspect, yeah, that can become very, very difficult. And, you know, there's a lot of libraries we can go to their documentation and they're like, takes an options bag, the following three are required, the rest are optional, um, must be mm-hmm. string or number, right? And you're like, yep. well, do they test using object.keys or do they test with the in operator or do they test by just checking for undefined or they do they check for truthiness? Um, and it's like, well, yeah, you know. Wildly different results based on which one of those they pick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like 90% of the time, they're not going to tell you in their docs what they do. Sure. They're not going to, you know, if they if they get a PR that's like, ah, just change it to this other thing, it's faster. They're going to be like, that's not that's not a break. Sure, whatever. Like those are yeah. all the same. Yeah. Um. No one thinks about it, right? And not to say that they should be thinking about it even, because it's like, well, it's just JavaScript, man. Like, do what you, do what you want. 